Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. I'm Yumesh Gupta. In this video, we are going to solve a question from LinkedIn front-end interview process. Many users have reported to us and over the web that uh, this question was asked as a problem solving one in their machine coding round. So I thought it would be a good exercise to solve. Uh, LinkedIn is a dream company for many uh, with a large user base and a global team. So I, I think it should be fun without wasting any time. Let's get started. So in this question, we have to build a function called tuple uh, where it takes an argument, which is a string and converts it into an arrays of arrays. Okay. And it should support a function called multiply that multiplies the ith element of each nested array. Okay. Let's understand this in depth. Let's see the syntax first. So we have our function. We pass input, which is a string. It returns an array of arrays in the item. An item should support a method multiply, which takes position as a uh, input. Uh, so the same we have here arguments, which is a string and it returns an array. Let's understand with an example. So this is the input string where we have these groups 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, 8, 9 separated by a comma. When we call our tuple function, then it returns an array of arrays where each group is converted into an array 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. And after this, uh, when we call the multiply function on it and we pass a position, then it takes the actual counting position, not the zero ba based index position because it is two. So that means two, five, eight, because one, two. Uh, if uh, we are taking the zeroth index, then it should be zero, one, two. So we would be picking three, six, nine, but that's not the case. We are picking the counting position. So two, five, eight, which is going to give us 80. And uh, the multiply method should exist on the return value. Okay, we can either directly set it on the return value or we can set it on error prototype. Okay, and we should submit this question within 30 minutes. Okay, sounds good enough. So let's start our implementation. Uh, this is our input right now. Uh, we know that we need to break each group into array and each array would be something like uh, 1 comma 2 comma 3 and so on then we need to collect all arrays into resulting array okay so this is like broad stroke i always like to write what i want to do just to have a mental map so whenever you encounter a problem uh, in an interview or in real world scenario in your production apps or at your day job always try to take care of uh, the sad flows or the guardrails first so that means let's say we create a variable called result this is going to be the final resulting value now if the type of input is not a string then we'll throw a new error or type error in this case where the a message called invalid input or uh, else if, if we don't have the input or input is an empty string then we'll return the result as it is this takes care of all the sad flows and all the you know uh, what we call uh, uh, guardrails uh, so that we don't do any unnecessary computation we take care of these conditions first now we know that we need to convert these groups into an array we can do them multiple ways maybe we can um, split them on a comma and then do some processing and maybe we can use like a regex i like to use a regex so let's say i create a variable called match groups and inside this the, the input we find our groups here so our aim here is that we'll start with opening the bracket and we have to capture a group till the closing bracket so what we can do is that we can say uh this and we'll start with a opening bracket we will go till we don't find a closing bracket so inside the square brackets when we add this negate sign that means that uh, uh go till we don't find this uh, closing bracket so we have to use plus which is one or more and if we find that then we'll collect it too and uh so we need to do this and if I console log now uh, matched groups and let's say I call this function tuple simply 
and I pass this input here. Let's see what output we are going to get. So I'll just run this and see uh, since the test cases are also running, we are getting the values. So, but we are getting our groups. Uh, if I zoom in, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That means we have our uh, matched groups. But what if we don't? What if we are not able to find anything? So that could be one of the edge cases here or side flows. So we can say if uh, match groups dot length, if we don't have anything, then we are going to return the result as it is. That is an empty array. So we added the sad condition here. Now what we need to do is that we'll iterate over all our groups and uh, we'll replace the unwanted characters like opening bracket, closing bracket and any space. Then we'll parse it to a number and push it into an array. Or the resulting array so let's see how we can do that so we'll have the result variable here we can say matched groups dot uh, reduce we can use the reduce here we'll have the accumulator first so that is going to be rows and we have our each group so we have to return an array so the default value would be an array now we need to replace so we can say row where each group uh, we can replace we can use a regex here. We need to replace uh, a space. We need to replace the space opening bracket and closing bracket. We need to replace it with empty space or not empty space with uh, empty string and then we can split it based on the comma. So that means when we have this row here 1 comma 2 comma 3 we'll replace it and we'll get 1 comma 2 comma 3 and then we'll split it into an array that's what we are doing here now we can do one more thing we can just map over it and we can parse it to a number which is going to be r and once we have that inside our rows we are going to push our row and then we are going to return the rows and once we have done all that we can return our resulting array of arrays and if I console log result here just to show you and if I run this right now it's so it's breaking it's saying item dot multiply is not a function because uh, we the multiply is not working so it's just checking the tuple it's not calling the multiply in the first case so that's why it's working fine our first test case is working and if we see the uh, print console log we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 8 9 here and same for the second test case that means our tuple is working but uh, our multiply function is not working because we haven't built that so let's build the multiply function we can add it to the array prototype so we can say array dot prototype dot multiply equal to the multiply we are going to work on at the top level here so we'll add the multiply here now we go inside the multiply function we know that uh, what we have we have to iterate over or uh, arrays of arrays that means our input would be 1 comma 2 comma 3 and 4 comma 5 comma 6 and uh, 7 comma 8 comma 9 we need to iterate and pick the position okay now since it's on prototype we can access the array through this but let's say if we don't have the array is empty what if that condition in that case we'll just return zero and let's say we uh, find all the elements at that particular uh, position so we'll create a variable called collection now inside this collection we'll iterate over each array uh, and find the position provided so now let's say we have one comma two comma three the position provided here is two but that but the actual position we want is 2 minus 1 which is going to be 1 so that's the value actual position so we can say let i equal to 0 i less than this dot length because inside prototype you can access the invoking element through this i plus plus now we need to find the current which is going to be this dot i we need to find the actual position we can do this outside loop also in fact which would be position minus one 
so a object dot uh, prototype dot uh, has own property dot call we will check if we have that index or not the actual position so the calling would be our current and we have to pass the actual position so we are just checking that uh, inside our one comma two comma three do we have the index one or not if we do then our collection inside our collection we are just going to push the current and once we have collected so after all the iteration we will have a collection where we'll have the value 2 5 and 8 so we can say uh, we can direct you know do the like a reduce and return it but in case what if we don't have anything what if our collection is empty so collection dot length if we don't have it then we'll just return 0 in this case or we can have an error condition that's up to you else what we can do is that collection dot reduce and we'll have the uh, result and the current and we are going to return result into current and since we have to multiply uh, the initial value would be one a lot of people just by habit write zero so that is sometimes and the test cases fail so be mindful of that so if i run my code now and it says an but found nan okay so something is breaking uh, let's print it out console log uh, current and uh, actual position let's see what are we getting so we are getting one we are getting one one okay that's fine and if we are uh, so uh, uh, let's print out the value also current is uh, current is an array array uh, current is an array and current okay my bad so it has to be uh, current dot actual position because if we have that position we need the value we don't need the array so that is the issue here so if i print now and i run it see now all our test cases are pa passing where we have to multiply the second element we are getting 80 if we don't have the right input then we are getting the type error and if the tuple is empty then we are getting the zero so all our uh, cases are passing and we have built the multiply function and the tuple function so this is the end of the video i hope you were able to learn something new today i you know don't edit the parts where i make mistake in the video or while solving the question because that how that's how real world works i don't want you to have experience where you know it's just all perfect uh, everyone makes mistake and then same happens in interviews or when you are solving at your day job so that's the experience i want to give to my viewers uh, also, there are two uh, links on the screen, uh, topmate.io slash Yamesh Gupta, if you want to book a session with me, uh, practice with me, or just talk about your career, my career, or in life in journal, you can book a session. If uh, you want to practice, I don't know where to start, you can use devtools.tech slash practice. Uh, this is the end. Uh, as always, do uh, mention if I missed something or something could have been done better then please mention in, in the comments or reach out to me on social platforms. Do like, share and subscribe. Uh, this motivates me to do more. I am trying to be consistent with my content and uh, your support means a lot. So till next time, see you, take care, bye-bye.